Aloha, welcome to Pacific Pulse. Our weather is changing. Specifically, we're going from El Nino to La Nina. But what does that mean? National Weather Service honcho Bob Ballard is here to explain what's ahead for us. How's it, Bob? How are you doing? Oh, great. Thanks for having me on, Guy. No, no problem, and uh, good luck to the Chiefs for you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, so explain to everybody that don't know about it what's happening out in the equatorial Pacific waters and why it's going to affect us. Yeah, so the El Nino, or the ENSO cycle, the El Nino Southern Oscillation Cycle, is those equatorial sea surface temperatures that go back and forth between above normal and below normal. And of course, those have impacts on our weather. This past week, the Climate Prediction Center declared that we are now in La Nina, which means cooler than normal sea surface temperatures along the equator. Um, so that's gonna have uh, expected impacts on our weather going into uh, the winter uh, portion of the wet season as we get into spring. Yeah, there's such a correlation, right, between sea surface temperatures and what happens up in the sky. There is. Um, that tends to be more the case when you have strong El Nino or strong La Nina. Right now, um, La Nina is kind of weak, and so the atmospheric response is a little bit muddled. It's a little bit perplexing. Um, we're seeing some signs in the atmosphere of La Nina type conditions. And in fact, we did have uh, uh, kind of a drier late summer period and we've continued to have drought uh, going into what should be our normal wet season. It's been terribly dry over the last month or so. And so we're hoping that we will see increased rainfall here in the next couple of months uh, to finish out the wet season and maybe get some of this drought behind us. Now, this is a very tenuous thing, right? Because there's no definites, even though we get a La Nina and we should get more rain, it's, it's not a guarantee. It's really tough to predict because we haven't been studying El Nino and La Nina for very long, right? Yeah, there's a couple things. You hit the nail on the head. We haven't really dug into the details. La Nina and El Nino are very complex. The other thing that we know is that the weather over the Central Pacific is not only driven by El Nino and La Nina. There's other atmospheric parameters that come into play and can kind of modulate what happens. The other thing, as I mentioned, is when La Nina is weak, which is where we're at right now, sometimes the atmospheric response is a little muddled. Um, lately, the weather has sort of been behaving for Hawaii more like El Nino uh, with really big surf events. Of course, we've ran the eddy. We had, um, we've had lots of dry weather during the wet season. That is more typical of what we would see during an El Nino type pattern, but we are expecting that things will eventually switch to a wetter than normal pattern as we go through the next few months. Is that a guarantee? No, um, but it is something that we're kind of trying to predict and trying to forecast. All right, Bob, that helps. Uh, thanks for yeah. helping us to clear that up and sure. hopefully we get those things uh, going on, right? Fingers crossed. Yeah. We could use the rain. Yeah, although, like you said, the El Nino surf has been incredible, just incredible. Yeah. Only for the big wave guys, though, I got to say. Yeah, lots of light wind days and really big surf events, which, again, more typical of what you would see during an El Nino winter. So it's a little bit perplexing as to what's going on. Uh, but we'll wait and see and, and try to get a handle on what's going on over the next few weeks. Okay, Bob, well, thanks for, thanks for uh, helping us out with all of that. And we'll see you up in Manoa pretty soon, up at the, the NOAA station. Yep, it'll be great. Yeah, and we'll see everybody else out in the Pacific.